Want to speak real Russian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at RussianPod101.com. Uh, ten lines you need for introducing yourself. Ta -da 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 -da! Let's begin. Меня зовут Катюша. My name is Катюша. Меня зовут. My name is. So when you meet someone for the first time, as we probably talked about it before, you say your name. You can practice. Hi, my name is Katisha. What's your name? Oh, nice to meet you. Мне лет. I am years old. Uh, maybe you don't really want to discuss your age, but if somebody asks you, you should answer, for example, 18. Мне 18 лет. How old are you? Сколько тебе лет? I'm 102 years old. Мне 102 года. Be careful with Russian because as you just noticed, I didn't say лет, but I said года, years can differ from which, which numbers do you use. It depends on which uh, age you say. So be careful. <laughs> Tricky Russian, yay. Мне очень нравится слушать музыку. I like listening to music. So I enjoy or I like is мне нравится. And then you can say what you like. I enjoy playing computer. Мне нравится играть на компьютере. I like uh, going out. Мне нравится ходить по клубам. I like shopping. Мне нравится ходить по магазинам. Or I like you. Ты мне нравишься. Одно из моих хобби чтения. One of my hobbies is reading. Or you can say my hobby is моё хобби рисовать. My hobby is to draw. My hobby is Kibana. Привет! Приятно познакомиться! Hi! Nice to meet you! Привет! Я Катюша. Приятно познакомиться! So, you should try saying, you say, hello, привет! And then you say your name, and then, nice to meet you! Приятно познакомиться! The friendly you will be ты, and the polite you will be вы. So when you want to emphasize on someone being friendly and you just met, you say приятно с тобой познакомиться. Nice to meet you as friendly. And nice to meet you as polite will be приятно с вами познакомиться. Okay, so just a small uh, little touch for you. Hope it's going to be useful. Я из Москвы. I'm from Moscow. Я из Америки. I'm from America. Я из России. I am from Russia. Я изучаю русский в течение года. I've been learning Russian for a year. Я изучаю русский в течение года. Okay, how long have you been studying Russian, huh? I hope you're progressing with me. Я учитель. I'm a teacher. Я твой учитель. Or you can say a feminine way. Я твоя учительница. Я учительница. Я учу русский на RussianPod101.com. I'm learning Russian on RussianPod101.com. Yes, I said it. So you're proud. You just say, oh, I am learning Russian on RussianPod101.com, of course. Чем ты занимаешься? What do you do? Чем ты занимаешься? Hi, what do you do? Привет, чем ты занимаешься? Uh, what do you do can mean uh, what are you doing now, right now? Like you come back home and say, oh, what are you doing kind of thing. Uh, or you can just say like... You're asking someone what kind of job, uh, work they're doing in their life. So, it can be useful. Okay, 10 responses to how are you? Now, let's begin. Давайте начнем. 
У меня все нормально. I'm fine. Now, how are you? Как дела? У меня все нормально. I'm fine. Спасибо, что спросили. Thank you for asking. How are you? Спасибо, что спросили. Thanks for asking. Thank you for asking. I'm fine. Как дела? Спасибо, что спросили. У меня все нормально. А ты? А у тебя? And you? How are you? And you? Как дела? А ты? А у тебя? I'm fine. And you? Как дела? У меня все нормально. А ты? У меня все отлично. I'm great. У меня все отлично. I'm great. And you? Я в порядке. I'm okay. How are you? I'm okay. And you? Как дела? Я в порядке, как ты. Я плохо чувствую себя. Я плохо себя чувствую. I'm feeling bad. Oh my god, how are you? Mm, I'm feeling bad. Как дела? Как ты себя чувствуешь? Я плохо себя чувствую. Я хочу спать. I'm sleepy. How are you? Uh, I'm sleepy. Uh, я хочу спать. Uh, how are you? Я тоже хорошо. I'm fine too. I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine too. У меня все хорошо. А ты? Я тоже хорошо. Спасибо. Я неплохо. I'm not bad. How are you? I'm not bad. And you? Как дела? Я неплохо. А у тебя? Как вы в последнее время? How have you been recently? Как вы в последнее время? How have you been recently? Uh, maybe I will ask this question to my grandmother. And maybe she would answer... I'm feeling bad. Я плохо себя чувствую. Катюша, how are you? <laughs> как дела? Как дела? Hmm? Как дела? Must know 10 words to party in Russian. Woohoo! Let's begin. Вечеринка. Party. Давай устроим вечеринку. Давай устроим Вечеринку. Let's throw a party. Танцевать. Dance. Я ног не чувствую. Танцевала всю ночь. Я ног не чувствую. Танцевала всю ночь. I can't feel my legs. I've been dancing all night. Фестиваль. Festival. Мы с друзьями часто ходим на пивные фестивали. Мы с друзьями часто ходим на пивные фестивали. My friends and I often go to beer festivals. Пить. To drink. Не пей слишком много. Не пей слишком много. Don't drink too much. <laughs> But I really doubt you'll hear it in Russian. <laughs> Напиток. A drink. Какие напитки ты любишь? Какие напитки ты любишь? What kind of drinks do you prefer? Guess what this one means? Ваше здоровье. Ваше здоровье. Cheers! <laughs> you remember that one? I'm sure you will use it a lot. And this one you will also use a lot. Напиться. To get drunk. Ха-ха. Ой, ты опять напился. Эй, ты опять напился. Hey, you got drunk again. <laughs> Похмелье. 
Hangover. Мы отрывались всю ночь, и теперь у меня ужасное похмелье. Мы отрывались всю ночь, и теперь у меня ужасное похмелье. We partied all night, and now I have a terrible hangover. Петь. To sing. Я хочу петь. Пойдем в караоке. Я хочу петь. Пойдем в караоке. I want to sing. Let's go to karaoke. Развлекаться. To have fun. Тебе нужно куда-нибудь сходить. Развлечься. Тебе нужно куда-нибудь сходить. Развлечься. You need to go out. Have some fun. Want to speak real Russian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at RussianPod101.com. In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Женщина спрашивает кое-что у продавца в книжном магазине. Какую книгу хочет посмотреть женщина? Извините, могу я взглянуть на книгу вон на той полке? Которую книгу вы хотите посмотреть? Книгу о машинах. Подождите, пожалуйста. Вот эту? Верно. Вот, пожалуйста. Какую книгу хочет посмотреть женщина? Женщина спрашивает кое-что у продавца в книжном магазине. Какую книгу хочет посмотреть женщина? Извините, могу я взглянуть на книгу вон на той полке? Которую книгу вы хотите посмотреть? Книгу о машинах. Подождите, пожалуйста. Вот эту? Верно. Вот, пожалуйста. Мужчина и женщина смотрят на меню в ресторане. Что мужчина заказал? Что бы вы хотели заказать? Эта пицца выглядит аппетитно. Я возьму ее. Я ел пиццу вчера, так что... Правда? Тогда как насчет гамбургера? Звучит неплохо. Я закажу его. Что мужчина заказал? Мужчина и женщина смотрят на меню в ресторане. Что мужчина заказал? Что бы вы хотели заказать? Эта пицца выглядит аппетитно. Я возьму ее. Я ел пиццу вчера, так что... Правда? Тогда как насчет гамбургера? Звучит неплохо. Я закажу его. Мужчина разговаривает с клиникой по телефону. До какого времени мужчина должен прийти туда? Здравствуйте. Чем я могу вам помочь? До скольки вы сегодня работаете? До шести часов. Но, пожалуйста, придите до пяти тридцати. Хорошо. До какого времени мужчина должен прийти туда? Мужчина разговаривает с клиникой по телефону. До какого времени мужчина должен прийти туда? Здравствуйте. Чем я могу вам помочь? До скольки вы сегодня работаете? До шести часов. Но, пожалуйста, придите до пяти тридцати. Хорошо. Мальчик читает свой дневник. Что мальчик сделал в первую очередь в этот день? Сегодня была очень хорошая погода. После обеда я пошел в бассейн. А вечером я пошел смотреть кино. Кроме того, я учился утром. Это был очень хороший день. 
Что мальчик сделал в первую очередь в этот день? Мальчик читает свой дневник. Что мальчик сделал в первую очередь в этот день? Сегодня была очень хорошая погода. После обеда я пошел в бассейн, а вечером я пошел смотреть кино. Кроме того, я учился утром. Это был очень хороший день. Мужчина и женщина рассматривают фотографию. На какую фотографию они смотрят? Это фотография футбольной команды вашего сына, не так ли? Который из них ваш сын? Вот этот. О, он самый высокий в команде. Он выше, чем я. На какую фотографию они смотрят? Мужчина и женщина рассматривают фотографию. На какую фотографию они смотрят? Это фотография футбольной команды вашего сына, не так ли? Который из них ваш сын? Вот этот. О, он самый высокий в команде. Он выше, чем я. Ten words for connecting thoughts. I'm getting connected with you. Can you feel it? Well, let's begin. Потом. Then. First we went to coffee shop and then we went to supermarket. Сначала мы пошли в кафетерию, а потом в супермаркет. Но, no. however, but you can do whatever you want. However, don't forget I'm the boss. <laughs> Вы можете делать все, что вам захочется, но не забывайте, что я босс. Тем временем. Meanwhile. Тем временем. Meanwhile, meanwhile, I'm having my tea. Тем временем я попиваю чай. Hmm. С другой стороны. On the other hand. С другой стороны. On the other hand. It's a difficult task, but on the other hand, it's a good experience for you. Это тяжелое задание, но с другой стороны, это хороший опыт для тебя. Более того, moreover, более того, moreover, cycling is good for your health, moreover, it doesn't pollute the air. Катание на велосипеде очень полезно для вашего здоровья. Более того, оно не загрязняет окружающую среду. А также, and also. As a hobby, I do dancing, skiing. Also, I do flower arrangement. Из хобби я занимаюсь танцами, катанием на лыжах, а также флористикой. Do you like flower arrangement? Well, when I do it, I really feel like this flower in my hands, it has another life because it's already cut. And you know it will fade with the time. So you are giving it like a fresh... Life to, to look as beautiful as possible for its last minutes and last days. So that's why I love flower arrangement. Вместо. Instead. Вместо. Instead. Instead of doing my homework, I decided to browse the internet. Вместо того, чтобы делать домашнее задание, я решила посидеть в интернете. Bad example. Very bad example from bad Katusha. Don't do that. Следовательно. Therefore. The next word is следовательно. Therefore. There was a traffic jam, therefore I was late for work. На дорогах были пробки, следовательно, я опоздала на работу. В конце концов. Finally. В конце концов. Finally. Finally, I could remember a few words in Russian. В конце концов, я смог запомнить пару слов по-русски. Кроме того, besides, кроме того, besides, кроме оплаты за обучение, вам нужно еще посетить лекции, чтобы получить диплом. 
Besides paying school fees, you also need to attend classes in order to get your diploma. Five sentence patterns for beginners. So if you're a beginner, it's perfect for you. Watch me. Меня зовут. My name is. Меня зовут. And your name. My name is. And your name. Меня зовут Сергей. А вас? My name is Sergey. And you? Yeah. I am. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Я учитель. I am a teacher. Где? Where is? Где? Where is? Где Джон? Где вокзал? Where is John? Where is the station? Так. That's so. Так. That's so. <laughs> so. <laughs> так красиво. That's so beautiful. Так дорого. That's so expensive. I prefer beautiful example. <laughs> Я люблю. I like. Я люблю. I like. Я люблю шоколад. I like chocolate. Я люблю петь. I like to sing. There is a slight difference in like and love, but in this case, люблю is something you really, really like. So we also use it to love something, like I love chocolate. But if you really like something, you can also say this word in Russian. Люблю. Want to speak real Russian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at RussianPod101.com. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder, which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. 
Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. Hobbies. Увлечения. Играть на музыкальном инструменте. Play a musical instrument. Oh, my childhood, I was dreaming to play piano. I always wanted to play a musical instrument. Я всегда хотела сыграть на музыкальном инструменте. So we're good? Okay. Something about the play again. No, we're, we're moving to sports right now. I like watching sports. Olympic games, I'm waiting for it. Катание на коньках. Ice skating. Uh, recently, Japan is getting very strong in it, but of course, Russia. To glide on skates, I would say, if we translate it like from word to word, we're ice skating. Мы катаемся на коньках. Let's go ice skating tonight. On our sleepy iPad. Рисовать. Hmm, draw. Can you draw? I can draw a little bit on the napkin when I'm in a cafe or something like that in a very artistic way of drawing. I would like to draw something. Я бы хотела что-нибудь нарисовать. Я бы хотела что-нибудь нарисовать. Would you like to draw something? Next one maybe guys will be interested in. Рыбачить. Fishing, right? Why not? It's summer, the weather is great. We can just go outside, pull a tent out and just stay and go to the river and do fishing and fish, fish, fish. <laughs> we can cook the fish later. Rybacic is a verb and the noun is ryba, fish. I go fishing from now on. Priyama сейчas ya idu rybacic. You got it? The next one is my favorite. Tanets. It's Dancing, to dance, to dance, танцевать, dance, to dance. Let's go to club to dance, yay! Пошли в клуб танцевать. Outside in the parking, do some break dancing. Next time you can do some cool movements, you can say it in Russian, танцевать. I like dancing. Я люблю танцевать. Fruits. Я обожаю фрукты. I love fruits. Апельсин. <laughs> You're never gonna guess what it is in English. Can you? Well, it's orange. Я бы хотела съесть апельсин на утро. I would love to have orange this morning. Juicy, juicy orange. Oh my God, I'm getting hungry. Arbuz. <laughs> it's watermelon. I know it's very juicy and it's perfect for summer. Мои дети обожают арбуз. My children love watermelon. Банан. Banana. Обезьяны на пальмах едят бананы. Monkeys on the trees eat bananas. Я добавляю банан в йогурт. I add banana to yogurt. No banana, just banan. Okay, next word is in June. It's very popular, I think. So it's вишня. It's cherry. Cherry. I used to climb cherry trees when I was a kid. Eat dirty cherries. Mm, I need a cherry juice right now. Мне нужен вишневый сок прямо сейчас. Okay, anyone bringing me cherry juice? No, I knew it. Клубника. Strawberry. Uh, waiter, can I have a strawberry with champagne, please? Um, можно мне клубнику с шампанским, пожалуйста? Комната. 
room. Vannaya. Vannaya is very useful because it's a bathroom. Vanna is a place where you actually take a bath. In Russia, for example, the bathroom can be only for the bath and the toilet is only for the toilet. It's, it can be separated. Yeah, because it was built in Soviet Union times, it's like together or not, you can still call it vannaya. Ya idu vannayu. I go to the bathroom. And the next room we have is gostinaya, living room. Gostinaya is coming. It has a meaning like it's connected with the guests living because you live in there, but in Russia it's more like you you invite friends and guests into that room. Приходите ко мне в гости в гостиную. Come to my place, to the living room. So the next word is кухня, kitchen. Kitchen, кухня is a very useful place. Я занимаюсь йогой у себя на кухне. I do yoga in my kitchen. Next word is спальня. Спальня is bedroom. To sleep in Russian is спать. Не заходи ко мне в спальню. Don't enter my bedroom. Спальня. А, it's столовая. Dining room. Столовая is cold because we have стол. And стол is a table, like more like dining table in Russian. Я люблю смотреть телевизор в столовой. I like watching TV in my um, dining room. <laughs> Colors. I love this theme. Very nice theme. Colors in Russian is цвета. Be careful because flowers in Russian is цветы, but colors is цвета. So the first color is белый. Белый. I don't have it right now, but maybe you do. Белый, white. We can see in many, many places around us. Мой холодильник белый. My fridge is white. <laughs> Here we go, next color. Ta-da! Zelony. Green. When you go to the nature, everything is green, right? Лес такой зелёный. The forest is so green. In Russian it sounds very strange. Red. Красный. Красный – это мой любимый цвет. Red is my favorite color. As you can see. Some red boots, red socks, red hat. Whew, the colors that suits everyone. Chorny. Black. Man in black. Chorny. So, um, if you want to look cool, you can always wear black. Я люблю одеваться в чорное. I like to wear black. Я люблю одеваться в чорное. I like to wear black. Oh, that's a cute one. The favorite girl's color. Розовый. Pink. Pink. We all see the world through the pink glasses. Мы смотрим на мир в розовых очках. I mean, we want to be optimistic, so pink, pink is a good color, but don't overdo it, I guess. Months of the year. Месяцы года. Number one is, I don't know why we start with July. It's not actually the first month of the year. It's a nice month too, so июль. The heat. The sun, the holidays, so... Поехали на море в июле. Let's go to the sea in July. And it's gonna be... Hmm, it's my. My. May. My, May. Oh my. Oh May. Some flowers start to bloom. Let's go to the zoo in May. Пошли в зоопарк в мае. Let's go to the zoo. Пошли в зоопарк. Next year in May we're going to the zoo. Next month is... Сентябрь. September. Сентябрь, сентябрь, September. Я пойду в школу в сентябре. I will go to school in September. This is how we start like in uh, Russia and post-Soviet Union countries. It's kind of a uh, month, so yeah, сентябрь. Next month is gonna be... It's my month and the first month of the year. Январь, January. Январь, первый месяц года. January is the first month of the year. My birthday in, in January. Next month is Mart. It's funny, March. You say CH in the end, but somehow in Russian is T in the end. В марте еще холодно. It's still chilly in March. Hi. 
Welcome to Introduction to Russian. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Katya. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Russian grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. Consider the English sentence, I ate an apple. But first, let's remove the article an here for simplicity. So we're just left with, I ate apple. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. If we break down the English sentence, I ate apple, we can see that the subject I is presented first, followed by the verb ate, and then finally the object apple is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Russian uses the same word order as English, SVO. Parin kupil sabaku. Parin. The subject, a guy, goes first. Kupil, the verb bought, goes second. And sabaku, the object dog, goes last. This means that you can create any basic sentence in Russian simply by exchanging the English words for Russian words using a dictionary and still be understood. Isn't that easy? In fact, Russian word order is much more flexible than English. Compare the following examples. Cats eat mice. If we were to swap the subject with the object, we'd get mice eat cats. As you can see, the SVO word order in English is fixed. Changing the word order changes the meaning of the sentence completely. Russian, on the other hand, is much more flexible. Starting with the SVO word order, koshki yedyat myshe. We can swap the subject with the object like we did for English. And yet, myshe yedyat koshki. The meaning of the sentence remains the same. In fact, we could swap the sentence any which way, and it still wouldn't change the core meaning of the sentence. Unlike English, Russian doesn't rely on the word order of the sentence to signify if a word is the subject or an object, because it uses special word endings that act as markers to indicate the role of the word in the sentence. In this example, we use the word ending ye in mushe to indicate that mice is the object of the sentence. And so we can move it around anywhere in the sentence and it still be the object. Now you know how to create basic sentences in Russian, but how do you make a sentence negative? Negation in Russian is easy. Just add ne, meaning no, before the verb. On speed. On ne speed. Ya znaю. Ya ne znaю. Unlike English, Russian permits double negatives. So in English, you would say, nothing happened. But in Russian, we would say, nothing didn't happen. Ничего не произошло. You can form many basic negative sentences in Russian by placing no before the verb. Turning a sentence into a question in Russian is even easier than turning it into a negative sentence. Simply raise your pitch at the end of the question as you would in English. Unlike English, though, you do not need to rearrange the order of any words. Simply say the sentence and raise the pitch at the end. Ты понимаешь? Ты понимаешь? To ask more than yes or no questions, you'll need to learn question words. Some common question words are... Что? Как? Кто? Какой? Когда? We'll cover more of this in future lessons on Russian grammar. Well done! Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Russian sentences can be formed using an SVO word order, just like English. Additionally, Russian uses markers to indicate the role of a word in a sentence, which allows the word order to be much more flexible. You make a negative sentence by adding no before the verb. And to create basic questions in Russian, simply add a question mark and raise your pitch at the end of a sentence. We've covered only the absolute basics of Russian grammar. If you're interested in learning more, check out our Russian in 3 Minutes video series. In that course, we teach you useful phrases while covering the fundamentals of Russian grammar. And each lesson is only 3 minutes long. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! Hi everyone, and welcome to Ask a Teacher. 
I'm Lina, and I'm here to answer the most common questions you send us about the Russian language. And the question for today is, what are the differences between Russian and English sentence structures? The most obvious difference between Russian and English sentence structure is word order. English has a fixed order of subject, verb and object. Russian is a lot more flexible. In Russian, you can place an object both before and after the verb. Take the sentence, I don't know him. Я не знаю его. Here, его, him, is an object. It can be placed before the verb. Я его не знаю. After the verb. Я не знаю его. And even in the very beginning of the sentence. Его я не знаю. All these sentences would be perfectly grammatically correct and would mean one and the same thing. At first, it may seem simple and even convenient to be able to switch the words around. However, the reason Russian sentences make sense, no matter how you shuffle the words around, is that the words themselves carry a lot of grammar nuances. If you need to convey a grammar nuance, you make a change to the word, not the whole structure. And this change can be made with the help of suffixes, prefixes, or endings. Almost all Russian words can be changed. Let's see how Russian nouns can be changed. Russian nouns decline depending on six grammar cases. You decline a noun when you need to change it from its initial or nominative form to some other form. For example, the word palichki, chopsticks, is an initial form. It can be used in a sentence like this. Вот мои палочки. Here are my chopsticks. To say that you eat sushi with chopsticks, you change the word палочки into палочками. I eat sushi with chopsticks. Я ем суши палочками. So you take out the ending e and replace it with the ending ами. Палочки палочками. Палочками is an instrumental case of the word палочки. As you can see, the change is made with the help of an ending, not with the help of preposition, as in English. Nouns can also change according to gender, masculine, feminine or neuter, and according to number, singular or plural. Adjectives and some pronouns can undergo the same changes as nouns. But don't you be scared. In some ways, Russian is even easier than English. First, there are no articles in Russian, as opposed to English, and some other languages like Spanish or French, which even have gender articles. Secondly, there are only three verb tenses in Russian, a lot fewer than English has. In English, in the present tense, for an action that happens regularly, you'd say, I play basketball. And for an action that is happening right this moment, you'd say, I am playing basketball. In Russian, instead of these two structures, you only need to use one. Я играю в баскетбол. And then you can specify. Я играю в баскетбол каждый день. I play basketball every day. И я играю в баскетбол сейчас. I am playing basketball right now. Another thing that makes learning Russian is just a bit easier is that there are no auxiliary verbs in Russian, words like do, have, or be. Of course, we do have all these basic words in Russian. The thing is that they don't act like auxiliaries in the sentences. In English, if you need to make a negative out of a statement, you need to carefully choose the right form of the auxiliary verb do, for example, and make changes to the word order. So, he liked ice cream, in its negative form becomes, he didn't like ice cream. We like ice cream becomes, we don't like ice cream. And the baby likes ice cream becomes, the baby doesn't like ice cream and so on. In Russian, all you need to do is use one and the same word, nie, which can be translated into English as not. This word не can be placed in front of any word in the sentence, and that alone will make the sentence negative. So, он любил мороженое. He liked ice cream. Он не любил мороженое. 
He didn't like ice cream. Мы любим мороженое. We like ice cream. Мы не любим мороженое. We don't like ice cream. Ребенок любит мороженое. The baby likes ice cream. Ребенок не любит мороженое. The baby doesn't like ice cream. Easy. Lastly, just like with negatives, to turn a statement into a question, in English, you need to change the entire structure. In Russian, all you need to change is intonation. So in English, you are going to work tomorrow becomes are you going to work tomorrow? In Russian, you don't have to move the words around. All you need to do is change your intonation and the statement becomes a question. Like this. Ты идешь на работу завтра. You are going to work tomorrow. Ты идешь на работу завтра. Are you going to work tomorrow? So how was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do send me some more questions about the Russian language usage and I'll be happy to answer them. До встречи! See you soon! Hello everyone, Lina here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Russian questions. The question for this lesson is How hard is it to learn Russian? The Foreign Service Institute, or FSI, created a scale to show how long it takes to get to professional level proficiency in speaking a foreign language for a native English speaker. Russian is a Category 3 language. That means it has significant differences from English. It takes a bit longer to learn than, say, Spanish or Italian, which have very similar writing systems to English. According to this scale, Russian takes approximately 44 weeks or 1,100 hours of study, but this will of course vary from person to person. The hardest part about Russian is grammar. There are many factors you have to consider when making a sentence, such as gender, number, suffixes and prefixes. With nouns, you have to be mindful of how they decline depending on the six Russian cases. With verbs, you have to be mindful of the imperfective and perfective forms, which are verb aspects that indicate whether an action is ongoing or has already been completed. For example, the word dog is feminine, sabaka, and the word cat is masculine, kot. If you want to say, I love my dog and I love my cat, you'll have to use different endings for the nouns. Я люблю свою собаку, but я люблю своего кота, respectively. You can see that even the pronoun my, свой, will change for these sentences because of the animal's genders. But there are many things about learning Russian that are easier than you think. Here are a couple of other facts about Russian that you will like. First, there are not many exceptions or special cases, such as irregular verbs or strange spellings. Also, there's no strict word order in Russian. And even if you're not familiar with Russian grammar, you can put the words in the sentence in almost any order, and a native Russian speaker should be able to understand you. So Russian, just like any other language, has its own difficulties. But if you give it time and dedication, you should be well on your way to getting where you want to be. Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. До встречи! See you soon! Hi everyone, Lena here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Russian questions. The question for this lesson is, what is verb conjugation and what to consider when conjugating a verb? Verb conjugation is a change in the form of the verb depending on the number and person. Just like in English, there are three grammatical persons in Russian. For singular, they are я, I, ты, you, он, она, оно. He, she, it. For plural, they are мы, we, вы, you, они, they. So, to conjugate a verb, you need to change their personal ending. For example, я люблю читать. I like to read. Он читает. He reads. Дети читают. The children are reading. If we know how to conjugate the verb, 
we can avoid spelling mistakes, which are common in the unstressed personal endings of the verbs. For example, the verb читайте – you are reading. Which is the right vowel to put here? Е or E? In rapid speech, Е and E in the unstressed position sound the same. But if you know the right conjugation of the verb читать, you wouldn't hesitate. Е is the right vowel to put here. Читайте. In Russian, there are two conjugations. The vowel Е is mostly used in the endings of the first conjugation verbs. The vowel E is mostly used in the endings of the second conjugation verbs. Let's explore the typical endings of the first conjugation verbs. First person singular – u, you. Second person singular – yesh, yosh. Third person singular – yet, yot. First person plural – Yem yom. Second person plural. Yeti yoti. Third person plural. Ut yut. Now let's take a look at the typical endings of the second conjugation verbs. First person singular. U you. Second person singular. Ish. Third person singular. It. First person plural. Im. Second person plural. Ite. Third person plural. At yat. Let's conjugate the verb читать, meaning to read, which is a first conjugation verb in Russian. Я читаю – I'm reading. Ты читаешь – you are reading. Он читает – he is reading. Мы читаем – we are reading. Вы читаете – you are reading. Они читают – they are reading. So the pattern here is to remove the ending t from the infinitive form of the verb you'll find in a dictionary and add the appropriate ending of the first conjugation. The infinitives of the first conjugation verbs usually end in at, yat, ot, yet, ut, and so on. Let's move to the second conjugation verbs and conjugate the verb uchit, which means to teach, to learn or to study. Я учу – I teach. Ты учишь – You teach. Он учит – He teaches. Мы учим – We teach. Вы учите – You teach. Они учат – They teach. The pattern here is once again to remove the ending it from the infinitive form of the verb and add the appropriate ending of the second conjugation to the remaining base uch. Most verbs ending in it are the second conjugation verbs. There are a few exceptions, such as the verbs brit, to shave, and slishit, to hear. Now you can easily conjugate the verbs by looking up their infinitive forms in the dictionary and making changes to the endings. The verbs in different aspects and moods conjugate in the same way. For example, if you come across the verb прочитайте, you shouldn't be confused by the prefix pro in front of the verb читайте. You should just look up the infinitive form of the verb прочитать and conjugate it in the same way you would conjugate the verb читать. The trick's done! Conjugating verbs may seem difficult, but starting practicing with the basic verbs will certainly make you proficient and confident in a short time. Pretty interesting, right? If you have more questions, leave them in the comments below. До встречи! See you soon! Top 10 phrases to never use in a relationship. Let's check it out. Я тебе говорила. Я тебе говорила. I told you so. Я тебе говорила. Я тебе говорила. А я тебе что говорила? I told you so. Ладно, без тебя обойдусь. Ладно, без тебя обойдусь. Oh, I'll do it myself. Ладно, без тебя обойдусь. Oh, I'll do it myself. If a girl tells you I'll do it myself, 
you have to do everything you can to do it for her. <laughs> Otherwise, it's the end of relationship. <laughs> ты меня никогда не слушаешь. Ты меня никогда не слушаешь. You never listen to me. Ты меня никогда не слушаешь. Ты меня никогда не слушаешь. Hello? <laughs> you never listen to me. I guess it uh, comes to the times when the guys are watching TV and the girl is talking to them about something important at the same time. <laughs> so let's avoid that. Нам надо поговорить. We should talk. Нам надо поговорить. Нам надо поговорить. We should talk. Неважно. Неважно. Never mind. Неважно. Never mind. Means it's very, very important. <laughs> Это все ты виноват. Это все ты виноват. It's all your fault. Это все ты виноват. Это все ты виноват. This is all your fault. I just broke my hail. This is all your fault. You invited me to the date. Unbelievable. <laughs> Ненавижу, когда ты так делаешь. Ненавижу, когда ты так делаешь. I hate it when you do that. Ненавижу, когда ты так делаешь. Ненавижу, когда ты так делаешь. I hate it when you do that. Твои друзья мне не нравятся. Твои друзья мне не нравятся. I don't like your friends. Твои друзья мне не нравятся. Твои друзья мне не нравятся. I don't like your friends. Я думаю, нам нужен перерыв. Я думаю, нам нужен перерыв. I think we should take a break. Я думаю, нам нужен перерыв. I think we should take a break. От тебя помощи не дождешься. От тебя помощи не дождешься. You never help me. От тебя помощи не дождешься. От тебя помощи не дождешься. You never help me. You never. I have tongue twisters. It will improve your pronunciation so much that you will speak like native Russian. Let's begin. Let's begin. Карл у Клары украл кораллы, а Клара у Карла украла кларнет. Карл у Клары украл кораллы. А Клара у Карла украла кларнет. Карл стол корлс from Клара, and Клара стол from Карл his кларнет. Карл у Клары украл кораллы, а Клара у Карла украла кларнет. Карл у Клары украл кораллы, а Клара у Карла украла кларнет. И yeah, no. <laughs> Карл у Клары... Карлу Клары украл кораллы, а Карла у Клара украла кларнет. О май гад, almost, almost there. Карлу Клары украл кораллы, а Карла у Клара... Ну. Карлу Клары украл кораллы, а Клара у... Карла у Клара... Карлу Клары украл кораллы, а Карла у Клара... Ну. Карлу Клары украл кораллы, а Клара у Карла украла кларнет. Карл у Клары украл кораллы. А Клара у Карла украла кларнет. Yes! Карл стол кораллс from Клара, and Клара стол from Карл his кларнет. You get it now? <laughs> Шла Саша по шоссе и сосала сушку. Шла Саша по шоссе и сосала сушку. Саша walked along the highway and sucked сушка. Шла Саша по шоссе и сос... Шла Саша по шоссе и сосала сушку. Yes! Саша walked along the highway and sucked сушка. 
you know what? Sushka, it's bublik. It's like a round, uh, duff, hard one. Šla se šla po šasi, se sala sušku. Na dvarje trava, na travě drava. Na dvarje trava, na travě drava. In the courtyard there is grass. On the grass there is firewood. Na dvarje trava, na travě drava. In the courtyard there is a grass. On the grass there is firewood. In the courtyard there is grass. On the grass firewood. Na travě trava, na travě drava. Кукушка купила кукушонку капюшон. Надел кукушонок капюшон. В капюшоне кукушонок смешон. Кукушка купила кукушонку капюшон. Надел кукушонок капюшон. В капюшоне кукушонок смешон. Ты куку бора худ фа ха литл куку. Литл куку. Put on the hood. Little cuckoo in the hood. Looks ridiculous. Кукушка купила кукушонку капюшон. Надел кукушонок капюшон. В капюшоне кукушонок смешон. The cuckoo bought a hood for her little cuckoo. Little cuckoo put on the hood. Little cuckoo in a hood is ridiculous. Кукушка купила кукушонку капюшонок. Надел кукушонок капюшон. В капюшоне кукушонок смешон. Говорил попугай попугаю. Я тебя, попугай, попугаю. Отвечает ему попугай. Попугай, попугай, попугай. Говорил попугай попугаю. Я тебя, попугай, попугаю. Отвечает ему попугай. Попугай, попугай, попугай. One parrot said to another parrot. I'll scare you, parrot. The parrot answers him, scare me, scare me, scare. Говорил попугай попугай, я тебя попугаю попугаю, отвечаю ему попугай 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 попугай. One parrot said to another parrot, I'll scare you, parrot. Other parrot answers him, scare me, scare me, scare me. The twist song is that papugai and papugai means uh, the parrot and scare me sounds the same. I mean, it doesn't make sense, but it just sounds funny. <laughs> Want to speak real Russian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at RussianPod101.com. Человек. Man. Человек. The tricky thing with this word is that in plural, it changes completely. So one man is человек, and many men is люди. Have you seen this man? Вы видели этого человека? Вы видели этого человека? Год. Year. The year has passed so quickly. Год пролетел так быстро. Год пролетел так быстро. Время. Time. This noun we're going to use a lot of times. Every time you want to know what time it is now. So, excuse me, what time is it now? Извините, который сейчас час? Которое сейчас время? Again, when you ask for a time, you can use two synonym words, nouns in Russian, which is время, as we just learned, and час, literally means hour. Рука, hand. Рука, hand. One hand, two hands, руки. Give me your hand. Дай мне свою руку. Дай мне свою руку. Имя. Name. What's your name? Как тебя зовут? Как тебя зовут? How people call you literally, which means by name. I hope it's not confusing for you. <laughs> Раз. Time. When counted. Uh, when we're counting something. One time, two times, three times. Сколько раз ты ходишь в зал? How many times do you go to a gym? Деньги. Money. In Russia, we show this from money. Деньги. So if you see somebody showing you the sign, they, it means they want some money from you. Give me some money. Дай мне деньги. Дай мне деньги. Жизнь. Life. Life is so good. Жизнь прекрасна. You can use that 
when you feel good, when you feel happy. So you can say, жизнь прекрасна. Life is good. День. Day. What a great day. Какой прекрасный день. What day is it today? Какой сегодня день? Голова. Head. Голова. One head is good, but two is better. Одна голова хорошо, а две лучше. Одна голова хорошо, а две лучше. Друг. Friend. Hello, my friend. Здравствуй, мой дорогой друг. Дом. Home. Welcome to my home. Добро пожаловать в мой дом. Добро пожаловать в мой дом. Слово. Word. Pay attention to which word you are using. Смотри за словами. Смотри за словами. Uh, maybe it's not very literal um, translation, but it means watch your mouse or something like that. Место. Place. Okay, let's speak the place for meeting. Давай выберем место для встречи. Давай выберем место для встречи. That's a great place to have a cup of tea. Это отличное место для чашечки кофе. Лицо. Face. Face. Лицо. Your face looks familiar. Твое лицо мне знакомо. Твое лицо мне знакомо. Неделя. Week. Call me next week. Позвони мне на следующей неделе. Позвони мне на следующей неделе. Нога. Leg. Or legs. Ноги. Now you have nice legs. У тебя красивые ноги. You have nice legs. У тебя красивые ноги. Мать. Мама. Mother. I really like talking to your mother. Мне очень нравится общаться с твоей мамой. Okay, much is more like official way of saying it when you don't know whose mother we're talking about. But mama is more like friendly and personally if you really know your friend's mother in person. So you can say your, your mother, твоя мама. Отец, папа, father. Basically the same with the mother. Uh, you can say uh, in the official way, отец. Your father, твой отец. Or you can say in more friendly way, твой папа. Your father, твой папа. Твой папа любит рыбалку. Does your father like fishing? Твой папа любит рыбалку. Месяц. Month. This word in two different meanings. One is, as I just mentioned about, month. And another one is the moon. The young moon is месяц. When it's not full moon, but, you know, the young kind of shape, like it's eaten cheese. Today we're talking about the month, month of the year. Месяц года. What month of the year is it now? Какой сейчас месяц года? Час. Hour. Basically, when somebody is asking you what time is it now, they're asking which hour is it now. So, they can ask you, который сейчас час? What time is it now? Который сейчас час? It is five o'clock now. Сейчас пять часов. In plural, it's changing a little bit, so it becomes часы. And again, it can be tricky because часы, the word, the noun часы, could be used for uh, watch. <laughs> Sistra. Sister. Sistra. Have you met his sister? She is very nice. Ты знаком с его сестрой? Она очень приятная девушка. Брат. Brother. Please come. I will introduce you to my brother. Приходи. Я познакомлю тебя со своим братом. Вода. Water. Oh, I'm so thirsty. Please give me some water. Я умираю от жажды. Дай мне воды. Сумка. Bag. Please take care of your bag. Пожалуйста, смотри за своей сумкой. Страшный. Scary. 
<laughs> Does it look like scary? This movie is so scary. Этот фильм очень страшный. I shouldn't say it with a smile on my face, but... <laughs> Большой. Big. Big. I love watching Большой балет. You know? You cannot say it's big ballet. <laughs> Literally, the people who likes ballet, they know that there is a very famous uh, ballet in uh, Moscow, which is called Большой балет. Большой балет. So you cannot translate it as a big ballet. <laughs> uh, you have to still say it Большой балет. Okay? <laughs> Let's go watch Большой балет. For example, bring me that big uh, basket. Принеси мне эту большую корзину. Принеси мне ту большую корзину. Быстрый. Fast. Быстрый. Fast and quick is the same. In Russian is быстрый. Run as fast as you can. Беги так быстро, как только можешь. Беги так быстро, как только можешь. Sometimes when the people want to rush you and do something really quick, they can tell you, быстро, быстро, like quick, quick, fast, fast, move, move, you know. Быстро, быстро. <laughs> move your legs. Медленный. Slow. Медленный. Why are you so slow? Почему ты такой медленный? Простой. Simple. It's not that simple. Все не так просто. I like this skirt. It's very simple. Мне нравится эта юбка. Она очень простая. Высокий. High. Tall. Высокий. You're so tall. Ты такой высокий. Or you can say, giraffe is so tall. Wow. Жираф такой высокий. Главный. Main. Main menu? Or... You can also use this adjective for like uh, meaning that there is a person higher than you, like for example, your boss or your manager, executive manager, somebody like that. So you can ask, when you want to ask who is in charge here, you can ask, кто uh, здесь главный? Which means, who is the main person here? I, I need to talk to like the boss of the boss. So, uh, who is in charge? Кто главный? Сильный. Strong. Strong. I'm not that strong. Я не очень сильная. This singer has a very strong voice. У этой певицы очень сильный голос. Длинный. Long. My nose is too long. Мой нос очень длинный. His hair is quite long. У него довольно длинные волосы. Добрый. Kind. He was so kind to me. Он был очень добр ко мне. Злой. Mean. Mean. <laughs> He's so mean. Or she's so mean. I don't know why. Она такая злая. Я не знаю почему. Она очень злая. She is very mean. Горячий. Hot. Hot drinks, hot food, or literally things that are hot. And you can also use for someone you find somebody hot, you know. So uh, you can say, she's hot. Wow, она горячая. Or you can say, oi, this tea is hot. Oi, это чай горячий. In Russian, instead of ouch, we say, oi, or ai. Ai, oi. <laughs> Холодный. Cold. Winters in Russia are super cold. Русские зимы очень холодные. Okay. Первый. First. Okay, move. I came first. Уйди. Я пришел первый. Grannies are queuing in a shop for something, in a store. They can be arguing who was first and who left the queue and then came back. So they talk about it a lot. Like, oh, no, I was first. I was first. Нет, я первая. Нет, я первая. So <laughs> it's funny to watch. Uh, first time I saw this movie. Первый раз я посмотрел это кино. Плохой. Bad. Mostly we use it as not so bad. How are you? Not bad. Как дела? Неплохо. So bad is 
плохо, о плохой. But not bad is неплохо. Не means not. How was your surgery? Как прошла операция? It was really bad. Очень плохо. Известный. Famous. Известный. She dreams to be famous. Она мечтает быть известной. Famous. Она мечтает стать известной. Her dream is to become famous. Последний. Latest. Literally, последний means last. Something that comes last. For example, you can use it when you haven't seen your friend for a while. Последний раз я тебя видел было зимой. Last time I saw you, it was in winter. Your mom can tell you, last time I talked to you, it was two weeks ago. Последний раз, когда я с тобой говорила, это было две недели назад. So she's kind of complaining. Короткий. Short. I have short hair. У меня короткие волосы. My holiday was too short. Мои выходные были очень короткие. Of course you want your holidays to last longer. Красивый. Beautiful. This picture is so beautiful. Эта фотография такая красивая. Сложный. Difficult. Hmm, this task is very difficult. Это задание очень сложное. Hmm. For example, you can say you're reading a book and it's too difficult for your understanding. So you can say this is so difficult. Это очень сложно. Or this book is too difficult. Эта книжка очень сложная. Легкий. The next adjective is light. This conversation is really light. Этот разговор очень легкий. Uh, literally means that somebody or something is really light, like weight. So, for example, this this computer is really light. So, этот uh, компьютер очень легкий. Or you can use it as a meaning that somebody it's it's easy to talk to someone or easy to communicate. So you can also say light, легкий. Our conversation started easily. Which means, uh, наш разговор начался легко. So it's without any thinking, just, you know, natural. Хороший. Good. As you hear Russian people communicating, they say it a lot. When somebody asks them, how are you, they say хорошо. And then, as okay, they, they can also use хорошо. So every time I want to um, confirm that yes i i listened to you i heard what you said and uh, okay so i can say хорошо 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 so we use it a lot <laughs> this movie was really good uh, that film был очень хороший очень хороший фильм or очень хорошая книга or очень хороший кофе coffee very good coffee right so which means it's really good хороший отдаленный Far. As uh, many other Russian adjectives, they are easily transformed into adverbs. So, for example, the far in English doesn't change, but in Russian, the adjective отдаленный can change into adverb. The Russian adjective far can change into adverb, which sounds a bit different, далеко. So, if I use an adjective, I can say This shop is a bit far from my home. Этот магазин отдален от моего дома. But if I want to say an adverb, I should uh, say... In, in English, it doesn't really change. But in Russian, it would sound a bit different. This shop is a bit far from my home. So, магазин далеко от моего дома. Этот магазин немного далеко. От моего дома. For this adjective, we mostly use it in adverb. I can see really far. Я могу смотреть очень далеко. Я могу видеть очень далеко. Also, this adjective you can use if there is a person uh, living with you, for example, or your best friend, but you can see that in his thoughts he's somewhere not with you. So you can say he is. Uh, Отдален, отдаленный. He's somewhere away from me, you know? So you can say, I don't know why, he's uh, really far in his thoughts. 
А я не знаю почему, но он очень отдаленный от меня. So, uh, which means he doesn't pay attention to who is there next to this person. Маленький. Small. Small. For example, this world is really small. Наш мир очень мал. Наш мир очень маленький. Скучный. Boring. So, for example, this speech is too boring. Эта речь очень нудная. Or скучная. Эта речь очень скучная. So, yes, you can, you can use instead of скучный, which is boring, one more word. It's the same meaning, but it sounds a bit different, and it sounds like that. Нудный. Нудный. Скучный. Нудный. Basically, same meaning. He is so boring. Он такой нудный. Maybe it's used more for <laughs> describing people and somebody's character. Счастливый. Happy. Счастливый. Happy. Счастливый. There is actually CH. Well, Russian CH. Sch. But it sounds more like sh. Sh. So you say счастливый. Happy! My friend is happy to meet me. Мой друг счастлив меня встретить. Добрый. Kind. Добрый. Kind. Oh, you're so kind. Ой, ты такой добрый. You're so kind to me. Ты так ко мне добра. Thank you, спасибо. Замечательный. Great. Замечательный. Great. It's a bit longer than English version. You just say great here, great there. But in Russian, no, you use it only something is really great. So you say, замечательно, замечательный. Today is a great day. Сегодня замечательный день. Красивый, beautiful. Красивый, beautiful. So make someone happy and tell them they're beautiful. Oh, она такая красивая. She's so beautiful. Or, these flowers are so beautiful. Эти цветы такие красивые. Нравится. To like. Нравится. Like. I like to hang out with you. Мне нравится гулять с тобой. Мне нравится с тобой гулять. Смешной. Funny. Смешной. Funny. <laughs> Ты такой смешной. You're so funny. Ты такой смешной. Or, in case of a girl, Ты такая смешная. You're so funny, girl. Энергичный. Lively. Energetic. Энергия is energy. Your friend is so energetic. Твой друг такой энергичный. Like, maybe you're like looking at him and he's dancing three hours straight and you're like, твой друг такой энергичный. Your friend is so energetic. Wow. Full of energy. Восторженный. Excited. Восторженный. Excited. I was so excited to watch you dance. Я была восторжена, когда увидела, как ты танцуешь. I was so excited when I saw you dancing. Я была восторжена твоим танцем. Позитивный. Positive. Позитивный. Positive. I try to stay positive all the time. Я стараюсь быть позитивной все время. Я стараюсь быть позитивной постоянно. Расслабленный. Relaxed. Расслабленный. Relaxed. I'm very relaxed right now. Я очень расслаблен сейчас. Somebody's giving me a massage, you can say, Oh, I'm so relaxed. Я так расслаблен. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.